In this lesson, I'm going to demonstrate one of the most basic ways to draw lines in AutoCAD, and that's through using absolute coordinates. Absolute coordinates just simply means I'm going to type in coordinate values relative to the origin of 0, 0 shown by my user coordinate system or UCS icon here at XY. So this is my 0, 0, and I want to draw relative to that. And if I take a look at my sample drawing here that I'm going to construct, my first point shows that it's over 3 and up 1. So when I begin with my line command and I'm asked for my first point, rather than clicking on screen, I'm just simply going to type 3, 1 and press enter. And now you can see that I've started 3 over and 1 up. Next up in my image, I want to go straight up 5 units, which means that I am going from 0 over 3 and up 6. So I will simply type in 3, 6. So the next point, I'm going straight over 1, but again, i got to count from 0, 0 every time, so that means I'm going to the right 4, comma, up 6. And now I'm going down 4 units, but again, uh, I'm always talking about relative to 0, 0. So I'm counting from the 0, 0. This time I'm going to the right 4 and up 2, so I'll type 4, comma, 2. To go straight to the right 1, it's going to be 5, comma, 2. And then now I've got a 45 degree angle, but that doesn't matter. What really matters is the horizontal and vertical distances I'm traveling. So I'm going straight to the right one and up one. But I got to count back from zero, zero. So that means that I am going over six and up three. Now once more going straight to the right one, I will type in seven comma three and enter. Going down two, but again, all that matters is what is it relative to zero, zero. So I'm going straight to the right, seven, up one. And then now I can put in three, comma, one, enter to go back to my original point. And that is all there is to drawing with absolute coordinates. Pretty simple way to draw, but obviously we typically draw more complex objects, so it won't always be the ideal way to draw lines. For that reason, there are a couple of other different coordinate methods that you can use to draw basic lines in AutoCAD. The first one that I want to talk about is relative coordinates. So with relative coordinates, instead of always counting back to 0, 0, you're always counting back to the last point that you placed. This makes things easier for a couple of different reasons. One, we don't always draw relative to 0, 0. Sometimes a point is just picked out in space to start. And in that case, the absolute coordinates mean nothing to you. Also, it's much easier to count how many points you went from the previous point rather than always counting back to zero, zero. So a couple things that you have to keep in mind is that now we're going to have some positive and negative values. Anytime we go to the right or up, it's positive. Anytime we go down or to the left, it's negative. So let's say that I wanted to recreate the same shape here. But for my first point, I'm just going to click somewhere out in space. I have no idea where this point is actually at. So the absolute coordinates mean nothing to me. But what I do know is that I want to go from point 1 up to point 2. And counting the squares, that's 5 units straight up. So therefore, when I put in my coordinates to tell AutoCAD that I want to go relative to the last point, you have to type the at sign, which is the shift and the number 2 typically on your keyboard. So I'm going to start with the at sign. Then how far left or right am I going? I'm going straight up, so I'm going 0 left or right, comma. And then I'm going straight up 5, so that's a positive 5. So at 0, comma, 5, and enter gives me my first line. So to get to my next line then, as we can see here, it's going from 3, 6 to 4, 6. But it's just going straight to the right 1. So instead of having to count back, from the origin, I can just simply say at 1 to the right, so it's positive, comma, 0, up or down. Now as I want to go straight down 4, I'm going to again start with the at sign. I'm going 0 left or right. And then I'm going 4, but it's 4 down, so that's a negative 4, at 0, comma, negative 4. Then straight to the right 1 is once again at 1, comma, 0. Now I've come to the 45 degree angle line, but it doesn't really matter. All that matters is what it is on the grid. 
it's going from 0.5, it's going over one and up one. So that's simply at one comma one. One to the right is always at one comma zero, just like it was the last two times. Going straight down two is gonna give me at zero left or right, comma, negative two to go down. And then finally, to go back to the original point, I'm going straight to the left four, so that's going to be an at negative four to go to the left, comma, zero up or down. And that allows me to construct the same shape, but again, I never had to count back to a zero, zero. I'm always counting from the last point that I placed. The final coordinate method that we're going to take a look at is called the relative polar, or sometimes just the polar coordinate method. And this one's a little different. Instead of putting in x and y values, we're going to put in the length of the line, which is always going to be a positive value, and then the angle that it travels. So in terms of the angle that it travels, we're going to need to make sure we understand how angles are calculated in AutoCAD. So here's a representation of some basic angles in AutoCAD. So one of the first things you'll notice is 0 is straight to the right, 90 is straight up, 180 to the left and 270 straight down. Notice that angles are positive in the counterclockwise direction. And you can also make up negative angles if you were going clockwise. So for example, instead of calling this one down here 270, you could also call that one negative 90. So again, to use the polar coordinate method, we are going to be putting in the length of the line and then the direction that it's traveling. So once more, I'm just going to start a line and just pick a point in space somewhere. And that first line that we drew straight up was five units long and it's straight up. So to begin with, we gotta start with the at again. So AutoCAD knows we're going relative to the last point. Then we're gonna put in the length of the line, which in this case is just five. Again, it's always going to be positive. Then we're gonna put in the angle symbol, which is typically the shift key and your comma and then the angle. So if we're going straight up, that's going to be 90. So if I want to go straight to the right one, that's going to be at one at an angle of zero, since zero is straight to the right. Now I'm going straight down four units. So at, remember it's a positive four because it's just the length of the line and the direction comes from the angle. So I'll put in an angle of 270. Straight to the right one is, once again, at one at an angle of zero. Now in this case, you'll find that sometimes you have to kind of pick and choose between methods because the polar method isn't going to be a very good method right now because I need to know the length of the next line. And I can certainly calculate the angle, or excuse me, the length of this line that's at a 45 degree angle, but it's gonna be much easier for me to go at one comma one, which is what I would typically do in this case. So I'm going to mix and match my methods here. Then I'm going to go straight to the right one. So once more at one and an angle of zero. Now I'm going to go down two. This time I'm going to put in at two at an angle of negative 90, just to mix it up a little bit and show you the differences. Finally, I'm going four to the left. So that's going to be at four at an angle of 180. And that completes the shape. So as you can see, three different methods for drawing the same exact shape. Still, they're fairly basic shapes. And in AutoCAD, we will learn more advanced features that allow us to do that even quicker. But I will say I always revert back to these in certain situations, especially the relative when I am drawing a rectangle, as we'll see later. And then also Anytime I'm drawing lines at a weird angle, I always use the relative polar coordinate method. So it's just a matter of getting used to these three methods and picking and choosing when they will work best for you.